What I'd like to do is to summarize the results of our study and our meaning the two co-authors and myself who have done the work uh, together in which we looked at how some of the major changes in international agricultural markets impact on European Union agriculture. And in my short presentation I'll do three things. One is to identify the major changes in uh, world agriculture and their potential impact on the European Union and on other countries. Second, I'm going to put numbers, uh, attach numbers to what I uh, said in the first uh, section of my speech. In other words, I'm going to pr uh, present the results of our analysis and then from that we're going to draw some conclusions. And let me begin with the agricultural treadmill. The agricultural treadmill is an economic process that has characterized world agriculture roughly between 1870 and 2000. This was the time during which world agriculture has produced ever more food for ever more people at ever declining prices. But this process has come to a standstill. The the turn of the millennium also marks the beginning of a new mega trend in world agriculture and that is increasing prices for food and other agricultural commodities. And the reason for this is that since the beginning of the new millennium we've seen uh, that global demand growth had, has outpaced uh, the growth in supply and this certainly can be expected to continue for the next few decades. In fact, in the first half of the new century, we can expect the global demand for food to double. And half of this will be the result of a continued swift population growth. In the year 2000, we had 6 billion humans living on this planet. By 2050, we expect 50% more, that is 9 billion humans. The other half of the 100% increase in global demand for food will be the result of continued per capita income growth in today's developing and newly industrializing country, countries which translates into a significant uh, per capita increase of food consumption. So the global food demand will continue to grow at a rapid pace, however, uh, global supply of food is not likely to keep pace with a rapid growth in demand for a variety of reasons. And one is an obvious one and that is that the acreage that is available on a global scale for food production and the production of other agricultural commodities is limited. The best soils, the most productive land already is being farmed. In many parts of the world there are no major land reserves left that could be used for farming or where they are such as the tropical rainforests. we don't want to use this land for farming for obvious reasons. To give you an idea uh, of the limited supply of agriculture of cropland in the world, I want to present the result of an earlier study that I finished uh, in January in which we tried to estimate how much additional land can be brought into crop production uh, until 2020 relative to 2000 and the result is presented in this slide. It is about 80 million hectares, <coughs> that is 5% additional agricultural land. At the same time, we expect the global uh, demand for grain to go up by 30%. And as you can see, the major land reserves are located in Latin America, in the United States, in Russia, and uh, the Ukraine. <coughs> it is not that we don't, that we have an absolute scarcity of land, but uh, if you want to produce crops on uh, land, then you of course need also need infrastructure, public and private in infrastructure for transportation, for uh, storage and so on. You need investment in machinery and processing facilities. Uh, you need skilled farmers who uh, are able to uh, till the land and of course there are a variety of input constraints that I'm going to, uh, additional input constraints that I'm going to mention uh, as we go along. So, as the land that is limited, uh, that uh, the land that is suitable for agricultural production is limited, the production growth that is necessary to meet the, uh, grow, uh, the needs of the rapidly growing world population must come for the most part through productivity growth on the land that is already being farmed. In the past, 
between 1960 and 2000, almost 80% of global production growth already was the result of productivity growth and only 20, roughly 20% the result of additional land being put into production. And this ratio uh, will have to shift even more in favor of productivity growth in the decades ahead. However, increasing agricultural productivity even further will be very difficult <coughs> because since the times of the Green Revolution, we've been observing a steady decline in the annual growth rates of agricultural productivity. And these are uh, the numbers. So it, from the 60s to the, uh, through the, throughout the 80s, we had a 4% annual productivity growth in world agriculture. We are now down to 1% and there is a con trend for a continued decline. And of course, there are two reasons for this. One is that with our traditional breeding methods, we have increasingly captured the productive potential of our crops and of our, our livestock. And the second is that in the rich countries during the 1980s and 1990s, during the times in which the rich countries perceived an abundance of, uh, of food, uh, agricultural research was reduced significantly and we must not overlook that still more than 80% of agricultural research is done in the rich countries and only 20% or even less if you account for the quality differences is done in the poor countries in which agriculture is a whole lot more important uh, part of the economy than it is in the rich countries. But something else matters as well and that is that in the past an increase in agricultural production has always been paralleled by an increased use of water for farming. However, water is becoming ever scarcer and thus more expensive, which acts to slow down productivity growth, uh, of course. Moreover, in the rich countries, but not only there, we observe a rapid growth in the public demand for quality components in food and agriculture. So it can healthy and wholesome, but also that it is produced in a sustainable fashion, that the environment isn't damaged as, uh, the, uh, with the production of agricultural commodities, and so on. And this simply means for us in agricultural research that in our attempts to increase agricultural productivity even further. We have to observe additional constraints, constraints of sustainability, natural preservation, environmental protection, and so, and, and so on. And from a societal point of view, rightly so. But in essence, observing these additional constraints acts to slow down productivity growth further. And then, of course, add to this global warming, which on balance will reduce agricultural production and the growth in bioenergy production, of course, this also slows down uh, productivity and production growth in agriculture. And there are two other variables that I haven't listed that I uh, want to briefly mention uh, because they are sometimes overlooked, and that is that agriculture is a very energy intensive industry, and the price of fossil fuels has gone up. Consequently, the cost of agricultural production have gone up, <coughs> and it's not only fossil fuels for machinery, it's the nitrogen fertilizer that's very energy intensive in uh, its production, but it's also some other uh, inputs that have gone up in price significantly. One of them is phosphate.